Hi, I'm Heidi with Onigo Stamping. Welcome to my craft corner. I get asked all the time, what is the difference between stamp and write markers and stamp and blends? So today I'm going to show you the difference in coloring between these two different types of markers. I'm really excited to get started, but before I do, if you have any questions about card making, uh, rubber stamping, or maybe you'd like to attend a card making class either in person if you live in mid-Michigan or definitely online because I have lots of those. Go ahead and leave me a comment or send me an email and let me know how I can help you. I'd also love to hang out with you further over on Facebook because that is where lots and lots of fun happen. So make sure that you follow the link to my Facebook group in the description to this video. Also in the description, you are going to find a link to my website where I have more photos of today's samples, as well as links to the supply list. You won't want to miss those. As always, please like, subscribe, and share this video. All right, Oni Go, let's get stamping. Today I am comparing blends and markers and because people ask me all the time what the difference is. So I have a bunch of blends and markers here. I've tried to pick ones that I have the same colors of both. So here on the left you see I have our stamp and write markers and then here on the right are our stamp and blends. So first let's just take a look at these and see what they look like. The stamp and write markers have dual tips. They have a brush tip on one end which let me just color. You can see what that brush tip, tip looks like. And then they have a fine tip on the other side. And this is what that fine tip is very, very, very fine. Okay. So that is the stamp and write marker. And this is uh, poppy parade. The blends, let me pull out the poppy parade blends. Here are the poppy parade blends. In your, when you purchase the blends, they come in a two pack. These are alcohol markers and you'll see that there is a light and a dark, okay? A light and a dark. So let's look, I'm gonna just grab the dark one first. And these also have two ends. So let's look at the, here's the brush tip. And I'll just color with that. And then there is kind of a bullet tip. I wouldn't necessarily call it a fine tip. It's not quite as fine as the other, but it is a bullet tip. And then we have the light one. You can see, you can see that the dark really uh, looks about the same color. And then the light one is just a little bit lighter. So those are the Poppy Parade Stampin' Blends. And as I said, the Stampin' Blends are alcohol based. That means that they are made, um, the base is alcohol, so they're gonna dry a little bit faster. You wanna be very, very careful to always click the tops on and you can hear it make that click noise. So some people like to take it and push it down on their table to make sure it clicks because you want to make sure they're always covered and the caps click shut so to help to keep them from drying out. Uh, the stamp and write markers are water-based markers um, which means you can do a few different techniques with them that you can't do with the stamp and blends. Uh, you do want to make sure you know you you cap them but they don't I guess they do still click uh, but it's not I mean, yes, they are going to dry out, but they're not gonna dry out as fast as the alcohol-based markers. With all of your markers, you wanna make sure that you store them laying down. And the Stampin' Storage is perfect for this because they have slots where you can slide them in and make sure that they are laid flat. This helps keep the ink evenly distributed between the two tips. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna do some stamping and talk about how to use these on a card. So let me just kind of slide I'm going to try to slide the markers out of the way here. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using the Butterfly Brilliance stamp. And I'm going to grab that. So I already have that loaded up here in my Stamparatus because I find this is the easiest way to use this stamp. So and you can see kind of a messy paper under here, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start with this first piece. I'm just going to put that all the way up to the top. Make sure that, oops, we want to go over just a little bit. I want to make sure that the whole stamp gets stamped right on there. Let's see. Normally I would lay the stamp on and pick it up, um, lay the stamp on the paper and then pick it up with the Stamparatus, but I already had it loaded. So I just need to figure out where to put it in there. So I'm going to start with the, with the inks. Um, let's talk about ink pads. 
With the Stampin' Blends, you always want to use the Memento ink pad. Always, 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 if you use the Stazon with the Stampin' Blends, they will run because this is a solvent-based ink pad and it's gonna make those alcohol markers run into the ink. It's gonna pull in the black and not give you a pretty look. So you wanna use the Memento, which is, um, it is a fade resistant dye ink, um, more of a water-based ink, okay? But it is permanent still. So you wanna go with the Memento for the blends. For the markers, you could use either the Stazon or the blends. If you're gonna do any type of water coloring, you need to use the Stazon because it is a solvent-based. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to ink up with the Memento. I'm gonna ink up my stamps. With both the Memento and the Stazon inks, I like to store them upside down. This helps keep the ink towards the top of the pad so it's ready to go. All right, so I inked that up. And, oops, I think I missed, missed a little bit up there. All right, there we go. And we will stamp this on just some basic white cardstock. There we go. Oh, those are so pretty. All right. So I'll just take that off just like that. And we'll go ahead and set that aside. Now let's do some coloring. Let's see what these look like colored. I'll set my inks aside. Let's start with, um, let's start with the, the, the stamp and write markers. Okay. I'm going to color in maybe this one right here. Let's do, I'm going to do the center in the poppy parade. And you'll see that it's very opaque. It's, um, it's kind of hard to see the lines. They kind of get covered up, those fine detail lines. And that really is how, you know, one of the big differences I see between the stamp and write markers and the blends. And I'm not coloring individual things. I'm just gonna color part of it. Let's color this part. Not doing any fancy shading on this. I just kind of want to want you to see, um, see how they stack up, right? All right. So I've colored. The other thing you will notice with your markers, just like when you had Crayola, Crayola markers as a kid, right? If you miss a spot and you try to go back in, um, you're probably going to get like, you're going to be able to see those lines. All right. So I started with. Um, the Poppy Parade, I'm gonna come in with the, what is this one, Pumpkin Pie. And I'm just gonna color right here with the Pumpkin Pie. Now these might be a little bit funky colors because I did have to try to pick ones um, that, we're gonna, that I had in both. <laughs> and you can see there's a very clear distinction where the two colors meet. They don't really um, blend one to the other. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the petal pink and let's just do some petal pink way out here on the edges. So there is the stamp and write markers and you can see it's very opaque. The lighter the colors, you can see better um, the, the stamped lines, the stamped detailed lines. The darker the colors, uh, the less easy it is to see those lines. I'm gonna go ahead and color in the body with some gray granite. So when you really get into the dark ones, it, it really gets difficult, but there we go. Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna come down here and color this one with my blends. So I'm gonna start with the dark Poppy Parade. I'm gonna use the same colors but I am gonna use both the light and the dark. So I'm gonna start with the dark, just like this. But otherwise, I'm gonna really try to do this kind of, you know, in the same method so you can really see the difference. So there's the dark. Now I'm gonna come in with the light Poppy Parade and just blend out those edges just a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab my pumpkin pie. I'm gonna use the dark pumpkin pie. I'll come right here. 
right in here. Now, what I like to kind of do is I'm gonna come back in with that light poppy parade and I'm gonna kind of color into the, color into that pumpkin pie a little bit. And you can see those colors kind of, they layer and they overlap and they kind of ble blend together a little bit better. And we'll come in with some light pumpkin pie. And you can see that the Stampin' Blends just have a little bit more of an opaque quality to them uh, that the Stampin' Write markers don't necessarily have. So now I have the petal pink. And I'm starting with the dark. Again, I'm not really doing any fancy shading here just kind of going light to dark and now I'm going to use the light petal pink on the very outside edges. And you can see between the Stampin' Write markers and the Stampin' Blends that you get a lot, uh, you get a lot more color variation with the blends and that's in part due to, uh, due to the I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. It's in part due to having the light and the dark blends, but part of it is also just that they are lighter and they mix together better. Um, they kind of overlap each other and they, they make new colors and help you blend one from the other. So I'm going to come in with my light gray granite. I'm just going to color the butterfly body. There we go. And I might come in with the dark gray granite and just do a little bit on the shading there. So there are my two different butterflies. Now let's take these butterflies and turn them into a card, right? And I'm just going to show you, I'm going to come back in with this uh, pumpkin pie and see if I can blend this just a little bit better. You might get just a little bit more blending, but it is, it's very its very difficult to blend with the Stampin' Bright markers. Whereas with the Stampin' Blends, those are gonna blend super nicely. Now you know that the Butterfly Brilliance stamp set has a die that goes with it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. And I'm going to use this big die that cuts all of them at once. Let me go ahead and zoom back out so you can really see see what I am doing. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. All right, so I'm going to layer this up. I'm going to grab grab my base for my big shot. I'll just lay my butterflies on there and then I'm going to line up the die and this will cut all six of these butterflies at once. I love this die. It's so much fun. It's just like that. And I'll cut this out. So I ran that through the Big Shot machine and let's see what we get. Just pull this off and then we can see we get six, six different butterflies. Now I could go back and I will color the rest of these. So I'll just stick these. I like to stick the extra ones in the stamp case um, and then I can go back and color them later if I want a certain size. So, all right, set those aside and let's turn these into a quick card, shall we? So I have some Poppy Parade cardstock. Oh, I did not score this one, but it is 11 by four and a quarter and I'm just gonna fold it in half. Normally I would score this and give it a nice score line on the end, but I forgot, so we'll just fold it go use my bone folder to give it a good crease now I'm also going to supplement the butterfly brilliant set with the artistically inked set this is brand new and I absolutely love it I especially love the different sentiments that are in here I'm gonna use the happy birthday for this so I have the happy birthday already mounted and then I'm gonna grab one of my strips you know me I have all these strips of uh, half inch 
basic white cardstock that I have uh, cut off from when I was trimming down pieces of paper. So I'll just grab one from my stash because they are perfect for stamping sentiments like this. And we'll stamp the happy birthday. So I wanna stamp it over here. So there's my happy birthday. And now we're just gonna cut this off at four and a quarter. And actually, you know what? I'm just gonna layer it up and cut it. So I'm gonna grab some pattern paper. This is from the Pattern Play uh, designer series paper. This is the Hostess designer series paper that you can get if you host a workshop. And I absolutely love it. It is so, so beautiful. I love the rainbow colors. They are gorgeous. I'll just slide this in. And I'm just going to layer this. This is uh, two and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to lay it layer it on a piece of basic black that is two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And I missed just a little bit on the measurement. Sometimes I, you know, I actually like to layer these up first and then trim the edges off just to make sure they are all perfect. So we'll go ahead and add our sentiment. Spread out my glue a little bit so it doesn't smoosh. I'm just putting this right on the front here. So cute. Just like that. And then I'm going to grab, this is a little trimmer that Stampin' Up! did as a special promotion a couple years ago. And I love it. It is perfect for this, but you could use your regular trimmer too. I just like that one is great for taking off little tiny bits. So I'll just do that. And then I'm going to layer this on a pe that piece of Poppy Parade. Just using my multi-purpose glue, the green glue as I like to call it. And we'll just layer this right on the front. And then I'm going to add my butterfly now. Here's a little trick. I have another one that I've already made so we can look at both of these. We'll, we'll do both of them. So here we go. We're going to put one butterfly on one and one butterfly on the other. Ooh, you know what? I did not get that on there straight at all. Oh well. So we'll put maybe this butterfly over here and this butterfly over here. And I'm just going to grab my Stampin' Dimensionals. And we'll put these on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And then you know with these butterflies what I like to do. Well, maybe you don't know. If you don't know this trick, I'm gonna show you what I love to do with these butterflies. So let me get the dimensionals. I'll just put the dimensionals on the wings. I kind of like my butterflies to be flying. Flying butterflies. Where's my take your pick tool? Grab my take your pick tool and I drop the cap to it and I have to find that later and just pull off all of the backs to my dimensionals. My pick got full. I have to take, take those off. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to come in with my multi-purpose glue and just put just a little bit on just the body in the very center. So now I can take this and we'll put our butterfly on and we'll just hold down his body for a minute Oops, and help him. So he looks like he's flying, kind of makes his wings bend up and pop off the page. Isn't that fun? All right, we'll do the same thing over here. go. So there's our two cards. You can see what that looks like with the Stampin' Write markers and with the Stampin' Blends. Two different looks. Um, 
that you can get with those. And this is just straight coloring. There are some different techniques that we can use with the Stampin' Write markers, and you should watch for videos um, of that coming up soon. I'm gonna work on uh, coming up with some different videos to show you how to do those techniques. So here are the two cards that I made today, but I have some other samples uh, using the stamp set and using blends and markers as well. And I just wanna show you those two. Here is another one using Stampin' Blends. And here I colored with the Granny Apple Green and Pool Party um, and a little bit of Pale Papaya. So that's really pretty. Again, using the same papers and stamps. And then I have another one where I used markers versus Stampin' Blends. So here we have the markers and I colored this with the uh, Poppy Parade and I think this is Mango Melody is what I did. So I didn't use quite the same colors. Um, so they're just a little bit different, but you can see that. The Mango Melody and the Poppy Parade with the uh, Stampin' Write markers. And then this one uses the Stampin' Blends. And here I think I used a number of different colors. Um, we have Poppy Parade, Pale Papaya, and then I think um, some Daffodil Delight. Yeah, Poppy Parade, Pale Papaya, Daffodil Delight. So all different cards, and you can see more pictures, some still pictures of these over on my website. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this video helped clear up the difference between the Stampin' Write markers and the Stampin' Blends as far as coloring goes. I'm gonna have some more videos in the coming weeks and how to use the Stampin' Write markers to do some different techniques because um, there's some different things that you can do with them and I'm excited to share that with you too. If you liked today's video, make sure that you like, subscribe, share it with a friend, and then come on back and see me for more tips, techniques, and inspiration. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.